What's up, witches? It's Witch Angel Nakora, and welcome back to the Hive Swap Friend Sim. In the last one, we took on. Oh, what was her name? Oh, frick. She was all of blood. <clears throat> I think it was, uh. Oh, damn. I'll get back to that in a minute, but we took off her route and found out she was a. She was a total merc. She was. She was a mercenary. I mean, she was a badass. But we're going to get on back into Chapter 7. <clears throat> a f business flagrantly, flagrantly illegal. And we already know this spiel. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's Colonel. Okay. But now we're heading into Remelays. And look at her. She is so cute. She looks just... Wow, but... Look at her eye. She looks at four pupils in that one and none in the other. How does she see? <clears throat> you wonder if there was part of town that seems to have some culture going on. Huh. There are bright neon lights and you can't read what the signs say, but you can see arcades, a performance space, and what looks like a movie theater. Perhaps more indie oriented compared to the mall cinemas we've seen before. As you continue wandering, you come across a trendy-looking building with a placard outside that shows a little cartoon doodle of a fancy waiter holding out trays of snacks. You can't read what the words say, but you recognize the intergalactic signal for free food inside. Come on in! <laughs> oh! Look at this! Oh! So pretty! <clears throat> and look at this! Look at these two here. Do you notice the painting? One's the Mona Lisa with a long horn. And the other one is the, uh, that, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like the farmer and his wife outside of the, um, barn. And they got Triz's pitchfork here, the trident. <laughs> and what's funny is this one here kind of looks like Halo, sort of. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't that look like Halo to you? <clears throat> and also... Look at this dude's horn. It looks like little sporks. I mean, I know demons look like sporks, but whatever. You head inside and it appears to be an art gallery. It must be opening tonight because there are little fetch of decorations and a little table offering drinks and hors d'oeuvres. There are many art appreciators here and when your adrenaline spikes and you realize that most of the trolls here are milling around our purple blood. Oh, yes. Purple blood. I love purple blood. <clears throat> You're not sure if the, some paintings and snacks are worth the high chances of being maimed when chaotic violence breaks out, but you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury. Someone, someone approaches you. You don't look like my other patron. Are you lost? Or perhaps you're something to start collecting. If you're loaded, ignore that first question. You don't. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I please pray everyone after all, regardless of your blood color. The four black pupils in her eye glint and sparkle, and you're not sure yet if it's a menacing or friendly sparkle. She grins at you and it shows all her teeth. <clears throat> so, what do you think of the art? Have you have, have any paintings caught your eye? She looks around. You don't know much about art, but you are a nerd, and a lot of the paintings in here remind you of scenes from popular movies and games back home. So that was Halo. <laughs> um, the artwork is stunning. Perhaps the best I've ever seen. Troll Mona Lisa who? <laughs> Stop, you flatterer. She puts a hand on her hip and winks at you. And you're actually guessing here that she doesn't actually want you to stop. You're also making the connection that she must be artist who painted all of these. You sent the opportunity for friendship, so you laid on thick and gush about how talented she is. <clears throat> oh, I thought you looked like a dumbass when you walked in. But you have good taste after all. Let me show you around. You follow Remelay through the gallery, swinging by the table with a free food first. Pretty good by the standards you come to expect on Alternia. What, you- That was right at first? Glance is actually Fago. No thanks. Hey, wait, what? The girl here never turns down free Fago. I mean, we have a store here called Cash Saver, and it's the only place in Paducah that I know other than a gas station that gets Fago. That 
stuff is so good. My favorites are the Jasmine Blue Raspberry, the Red Pop, the Cream Soda, the Pineapple Orange, and the uh, Root Beer. So if you have to try the Cotton Candy flavor, I really want to try that one so bad. <clears throat> You may have noticed some themes in my exhibited work. I don't love clowns or gore as much as it may seem. That is what I have to say here. If you look at my work online, you'll see more of the full range of my art. Some of this fancy gallery crap probably left to some of my best customers. Old clowns frickin' love art. The rich has folk and still buy anything as long as it's violent enough or features religious themes. You've seen the kind of destruction and mayhem that pop-up walls are capable of. So you're surprised that she doesn't seem to mind being in a crowded gallery with so many of them. <clears throat> Most of the trolls you've interacted with have done either their best to steer clear of the clown murder cult guys, or especially when one of those hate romance relationships isn't on the table. Isn't it kind of dangerous to act actively court them for her, her, for her audience? Oh sure, they can be unpredictable. To keep them happy and require some schmoozing. Occasionally I have to pretend like I've drunk the fago and post some religious, religious references out of my ass. But it's nothing I can't handle. You can make a lot more money if you're as an artist if you're not choosy about who you draw. One of my customers is this blue blood moron who only ever commissions me to draw low bloods and quadrants to other low bloods. Um Blue Blood Moron? Are you talking about that other artist we talked to about a few months back? <clears throat> I'm getting convinced I'm getting him a deal on his rates when he's actually paying five cents when I charge anyone else. <laughs> oh, different Blue Blood then. My point is, artistic integrity is for chunks. If you want to get ahead in this world, give the people what they want first. It strikes you as a depressing outlook on the creative process, but you're aware by now that idealism on Alternia tends to lead to shorter lifespans. You have to admit, looking around at the crowd in this gallery, that her cynical approach seems to be working. <clears throat> I tell her she sounds pretty business savvy and in addition to talented, she squeaks at you again. <laughs> Thanks, I know. Because I'd make bank doing crap like this, I'm able to find my passion project. You should really check out my webcomic. Oh, time out. Uh, Hussy, are you promoting, um, uh, Homestuck in your in this game here? I mean, we already know the Homestuck. <laughs> Just, wow. But before you can find out what our webcomic is about, she doesn't know a troll that has been sidling up to you. As she approaches, she whips out what looks to be a small recording device with a smile. Remily's face goes carefully blank as she crosses her arms over her chest. And how can I help you? Ah, uh, yes. Hello there, Miss Namak. I'm with Alternia Nightly. But I must say, it looks like your first ever gallery exhibit has been a smashing success so far. The journal with therapy tone and not to words don't seem threatening to you, but <clears throat> you're picking up on some tense vibes from Remily, whose hair ribbon swings forward in front of her face aggressively. Of course it's a, it's, a, it's a success. I never expected otherwise. Mm-hmm, maybe not. But in some of the art world, I've expressed surprise at the timing though. Some called it bold, considering that you're in the middle of a plagiarism, plagiarism controversy. Would you care to comment on the case against you by Trident Media? Again, instead of being caught guard by the question sprung on her, Remily relaxes and laughs. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> As if they have any kind of real evidence of violating their precious intellectual property. <clears throat> Sounds like the YouTube legal system sometimes. Well, this character said draw and profit are entirely original. And Twitter media and their legislature are just mad about it because the whole internet knows that my storylines are better than the source material. Oops! I mean, better than the unrated created works that I call it happened to better superficial resemblance too. You better quote me on that. <laughs> the reporter takes the quote and scuttles away. Remily seems unbothered, but you can't help but feel concerned for her. Copyright infringement is serious business. Is your friend new friend in illegal hot water? Nah, Alternia barely has any copyright protection to speak of. 
So just that little bit Gorzak trying to stir up shit as usual. So the company behind his lawsuit would, wouldn't even care if he hadn't even gotten involved. Oh, we already know about Gorzak. I mean, you think it was a $500 uh, or say $500 uh, boom buck rebate on the last episode. <clears throat> it's no big deal. Nothing I can't handle. Go back to following her around the gallery, keeping your distance when a purple bug comes up to compliment her on her work. She told her that despite her confident attitude, Remley is still thinking about that journalist. She has her foot in front of the pangs whenever there's a lull in conversation, and glances at the door that the journalist just left through. You know, it's not like Alternia has a free press or clear, credible newspaper. That reporter was probably hired by someone with a grudge to dig up dirt on me. I don't think it was Gorzak, actually. Too obvious. Amateurish. No, this speaks of my competition. The artistic establishment thinks that all I do is fan art and shouldn't be taken seriously as an artist. All of their paintings in the museum across the street. And they hinted that I have managed to put up my own exhibit. <clears throat> Those stuck up pretentious bulge scrubs that have been trying to sabotage me for so long. Turns to you, the, her uh, hands balled up at the fists and the X in her eye flashing with passion. I am waiting for the opportunity to strike back at them. The airy ones that accuse me of being a thief and a hack anyway. That is what I steal from them, Briard. But their security is tight, and I haven't had an accomplice until now. What do you say? What does it stop you pull off a risky art heist? Hell frickin' yes. Remily does one round, last round her exhibit, saying goodbye to her patrons and grabbing her bag, which seems to be mostly art supplies as we head out the door and onto the street. <clears throat> you see that she wants to rob us at the end of the block, in a much bigger, fancier building than the one you just walked out of. All the lights are off inside, and it doesn't seem to have any signs of advertising current exhibit. <clears throat> hmm. We can do this one in two ways. Follow that journalist and steal the keys if she has them, but break in when at them. Mmm, let's steal the keys. You would much rather walk through an unlocked door than try to bust it down, and the reporter is still in sight, turning a quarter down the street. You try to imitate Remley's casually a confident way of walking like she could blend in anywhere and pull up anything. But despite your efforts to not attract suspicion, you keep being looked. Not being the same species as everyone around you tends to make you stand out. Shit, this could be a problem. I could put together a disguise for you. Hang on. She, you watch as she starts pulling things from her bag. She seems to have all sorts of things in there, from paintbrushes to blobs of clay to paint. And you say she might be pulling together some fake corns for you from scratch real quick? But before she can finish, you realize that one of the purple bloods about to walk in Remelay's gallery is staring at you. Looks vaguely familiar. And you realize a little too late where you're going, where you met before when he starts walking towards you. I remember you! You broke into my apartment! It's the same troll that you and Polipa escaped from. He back away as he advances, a lazy grin on his face. Remily glances from him to you and back to him again. Well, fuck. It looks like I'm not gonna have, not going to have an accomplice after all. Sorry, pal. Uh, we fricked up. She hoists her bag over her shoulder and shrugs her hands in a what can you do gesture. Then, as she's gone, the purple, big purple blood paying her no mind as she has gone. You want to betray, but it's hard to blame her considering how scary this guy is. In your heart, you know that you're dead already, but you're not going to accept your fate without attempting to prevent it. <clears throat> Make a mad dash to escape, sprinting toward the skinny alleyway and thinking that maybe you could scamper up a fire escape or something. Unfortunately, your attacker size didn't seem to slow him down, and you can hear his heavy footfalls right behind you. He laughs and it somehow sounds dopey and dumb and completely terrifying at the same time. Make it to the alley but you fricked up because it's a dead end and you don't see anything you can use to clamber up to high enough ground. You turn to face him, hopelessness sinking down to your toes. Your scrappy alien tenure on this hazardous new planet is about to come to a messy end. The purple blood swings his massive club lazily in one hand as he approaches you, not bothering to run anymore. You drop into a fighting crouch, thinking back to your third grade karate lessons for any moves that could be useful. But before you can crush your skull 
and you see a flash of movement behind him. <clears throat> he staggers, dropping the club as something hits it from behind. As much as I appreciate inspiring my fans, I'm gonna have to ask you not to interpret my art as uh, so literally, as in no murdering. Wow. Remley springs off the troll's back after clawing him and rolls to the side, avoiding a swinging fist. She grabs for his club, which is almost as long as she is tall. But before she can use it, his next blow catches her below the rib cage, sending her flying across the alley and into the brick wall. She's on her feet again fast, but you can tell that she's injured. And now that she doesn't have the element of surprise on her side, the purple blood turns back on you as he closes in on Remley, laughing again. You can't let him kill her. It's not much she came back for you, but you have no idea how you can help here. Your eyes land on Remley's bag, tossed to the side in the melee. In this direction, you grab a loose paintbrush that rolled out of it. <clears throat> you dive forward with a battle cry and stab the end of the paintbrush deep into the high blood's calf. Violet blood squirts you in the face. He yelled and you managed to roll away just in time to avoid getting smacked. The slight stab wound hasn't slowed him down much, but it's given Remley a chance to dive out of his range. And while he's still trying to grab you, she gets a hold of his club again. Oh, dang! Look at that! She's stronger than she looks. Strong enough to get a good wind up with that thing, and when he turns around, she brings it down hard onto his skull. Oof. Cotton candy colored, uh, club there, but now my screen's all full of purple. <laughs> it takes a few more good smashes before the troll finally stops groaning and twitching. Rimley breathes heavily, wiping blood splatter off her forehead. She looks up, meeting your eye. You're absolutely positive this is the most dramatic way you've ever been rescued. Feel like she came back and risked her life for you. <sighs> Don't mention it. I needed, I needed an accomplice, right? She drops the club and staggers over to you, pausing to spit out cerulean blood. You remember that she took some damage and hurried to support her, offering your weak human arm to lean on. Is she gonna be okay? I'll be fine. The ceruleans are tough to call, even for a wannabe subjugulator. She tilts her head, looking down at the way her, her blood swirls with larger quantities of purple blood cooling onto the asphalt. <clears throat> oh, that's actually not as bad as an autistic medium. The colors and textures work well together. Maybe that blue blood kid from Chitter is onto something. Anyway, thanks for having my back with that paint splash. I took some quick thinking. But we make an okay scene. I never killed anyone before, but they kind of rule, didn't it? You're not sure that you would choose those exact words, but you're pretty relieved right now. You might not have, you might not have bloodthirsty glint in your eyes that Rumley does, but maybe you could interpret your adrenaline shakes as you force overload or something. <laughs> Hell yeah, me too! I can see that people getting get into this killing business. If I was such a great artist, I could see this switching careers. What do you do when you're good at so many things? You have to pick one and stick to it. So no professional assassinations for me. I'm still determined to rob the shish out of my competitors, so... And you, now that we've killed someone together, this makes sense for us to take part in crime, right? Your heart leaps at the implication that she wants to stick together. You truly do not, do not, do not, do not mind breaking every law in the books if it means she'll be your friend. Nice. We probably don't need to go around breaking every law. I'm going we'll to steal some art. So maybe we can reschedule the heights for another day. This neighborhood will be crawling with drones as soon as they realize the high blood is good. You feel bad that this troll attempting to slaughter you ruined Rumley's gallery opening. Oh, are you kidding? What customer base loves this kind of crap? My art will even get even more violent reputation when the word gets out that someone died in my first gallery show. That's a mess I spoke. You limp out of the alley, supporting Remley with your arm around her waist. <clears throat> she directs you to the back entrance of her gallery where the two of you can clean up the blood and hide until the drones and the crowds are gone. If you don't mind, you can lay low at my place for a few days while you plan this hike. I might as well get the work done when we wait and scheme. This fight is pretty inspiring. You're already my accomplice, so how would you feel about Alpha being my muse? What?! <clears throat> For not only her friend, but also her muse? 
Oh, yes. It's like my friend, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, I'm trying to think of her name. <clears throat> Azura. My friend Azura from the Raspberry Zamino. She uses my edit as inspiration for her drawings. I didn't know that she until she told me, and I'm like, what? My friend Azura is an, is an amazing, talented artist, just like my friend North. Azura and my friend North are two amazing, talented artists, and y'all should really go check them out. I'll leave links to their Twitters down below in the description, along with the link to this DLC, because we just finished Chapter 7. <sighs> I didn't think I'd actually pull off her voice, because when I, when I thought art, I was thinking French, I was thinking the Louvre, I was thinking Mona Lisa, they all have something in common here. So I had to give her the French accent, and that's why I sound like a doofus. Uh, shout out to any of my French fans out there, by the way. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. But, that was, that was Volume 7. I can't wait for Volume 8 to come out. I really, really hope they bring out another Purple Blood. I really want the Barzil Twins to be in the next one. Along with either Adaja, no, Adaja, the Gold Blood that um, we heard about in the first part of chapter 7, or at least, I don't know, maybe another Rust Blood, or, I really want to, I really want to talk to that, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, olive-blooded, um, oh, what was it, the olive-blooded artist, because <laughs> they sound like a really, uh, really nice person, by the way, they're another non-binary troll, so that's why I use that pronoun, I'm gonna get out of here, I'm gonna take a break. I have been recording for an entire three months, non-stop. I need a break. <laughs> so, I'll talk to y'all soon. If you liked the video, why don't you hit that like button with a little bibbity bobbity boop and hit the notification bell to find whenever I upload. <laughs> See you soon. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends, and uh, we're amused. How amusing. Woohoo! <laughs>